But once you have the starting date for Daniel's every week, you are an idiot if you can't figure out the dates for the rest of the stuff. Right. You would be a classic moron if you, if you have that date and you still go on saying real dumb stuff like, Oh, listen, brother, nobody can know the day or the hour. Duh. That would have been true up until then. Once you have that, you can add 1,335 and get that. Hello, or how about exactly halfway of seven to get that? Yeah. Yeah. Or how about this plus seven years gives you that? Yeah. Oh, but no one can know the day or the hour. Moron. You are a moron. And that's, and that's everybody. <laughs> all of them. We were all morons when it was happening. I didn't know. I should have known when that was happening at the time of yeah. we had plenty notice they had been talking about it for two years they kept delaying it the peace plan by the fella who if he couldn't bring peace to the middle east nobody could that should have been a tip-off yeah that should have been 666 fifth avenue should have been a little clue I mean, it goes on and on and on. The arise of all the systems and all the talk about being the last days. That is baloney now. Yep. The Bible makes it a sad moment. John wept greatly because there was no man there. When it was announced that we're going to open the book now, this puts a definitive timeline. We're now committed. The second coming of Christ will now have an available date on it. I'm going to open the book now, everyone watching. John wept because nobody was there. Why was nobody there? Because we are wicked. That's why. We are wicked. We are hard-necked, stiff-necked, just like every generation of Christians has ever been. Right. Oh, it might be. Fill it on your might be bull crap. We are in Daniel's 70th week. And it's time you woke up. Well, I get my Bible back. <laughs> and realized, bless your little pea picking heart, that we're not going to be absent. Right. Come on, preach it. When the thing goes down. Yeah, we'll just do a welcome. So it's uh, No Nonsense Christianity interviewing Brother James. I have wanted to capture this story from James for <laughs> ages and ages. And I've never had a chance to do it in the past. I am getting this story out there. It's James's crazy trip to Canada with the famous Bill McGregor. So, James, this this was about what was it a year ago now or a year and a half ago? No, no, that was that was the second. Um, oh, there was a second uh, trip, wasn't there? That's that's almost the second ministry trip itself. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yes. so this was a couple of years ago. So, okay, you got a you got a boat to New York. It's from New York to Niagara. Off you go. Well, that's the initial premise of it, yeah. But with anything with Bill McGregor, um, things are you know can rapidly change fast, and generally on the decline going south. Um, but yeah, so basically, um, I guess the context to give the people listening some idea about this was: I have a friend who I'll uh, remain nameless, who I don't know nothing compared to my friend. Um, Let's just call him W, and because uh, he would find that affectionate. Anyway, um, he knows everybody of everybody, and there was a reason uh, with the the IFB at the time uh, why I'd had to go to Canada and some other little things. Anyway, um, so he said, "Well, there is one person who." Um, uh, is is an IFB. I wasn't aware of the little schism and Bill had um, pretended to be his dad at this stage and all those other things that we all know, pardon me, that we all know about now. And so I always thought it was strange in the sort of six to nine months leading up to this that he would always put his secretary on the phone. And I say secretary, um, meaning uh, the person who did all his work for him. And um, we'll get to that later on. He was a very good friend of mine who I became very good friends with, should I say. So anyway, um, so I always thought it was a bit strange that every time we get into a conversation, I'd hear hammering and drilling and, and, and this and that. And But you know what? Like, 
as I always say, and you know me, like I get up, you know, I, I can be doing very many, many different things. So I never want to be too like judgmental in the case of like what's going on. So, you know, just give people the benefit of the doubt. Seems a little strange, but whatever. So I thought, you know what? Rather than research into somebody just for a change, I'm going to just let it go and just see what happens here. So anyway, um, apparently it's all set up. It's all arranged. Um, I get to New York. Um, I can't get hold of them. They're then ringing me to say, oh, um, you, the travel arrangements are not right and this and that. So I ended up having to stay in New York, um, which, as you know, has somebody who's actually lived and worked in New York in a ministry and a secular role. Um, it's nuts, and I hope I never have to live there again. Um, so even just visiting for a day or two is is strenuous these days um, on the eye. Um, so anyway, so the the had me all over, and eventually got me in somewhere. I don't know why it took so long to get a hotel booked, but anyway, um, train came the next day. Went on the Amtrak, and. Um, so I get up there, and um, this was during the time of the, the scamdemic, um, during COVID. And um, basically, we had to fill in this Arrive Can app, which I don't know if some of the viewers know, but when you had to go to Canada at that time, you had to have this special app. And Bill had sort of like um, told the taxi driver, um, to, to pick me up out the way rather than just going through the border, which we should have done um, at Union Station. Uh, he had this elaborate plan of taking the taxi through and th the train would have just been the easier option. Anyway, so uh, we eventually get through um, and I there's a Tim Hortons there. Uh, for anybody in England, they've only had Tim Hortons recently, but in Canada, Tim Hortons is like basically um, the Starbucks of Canada, if you like. It's it's kind of the main thing. So I get there. I'm sat there. I get there um, sort of late evening, not too late evening, but maybe like eight or nine o'clock. And like two hours later, and Bill's still nowhere near to be seen. And, like, these people are, like, you do realise you're kind of far out here at the moment, right? Because we're nowhere near Toronto. We're right, like, the other side of Buffalo. And um, so another hour goes by or something, and he eventually turns up and just, like, he turns up as if, the, as if they've just, like, five minutes late. So, like, no apologies or anything like that. And just... Um, yeah, very bizarre. And then he had a he had a, a guy with him who I got to know, um, Brother Wayne. And I'll explain about mother Brother Wayne in a bit. Um Brother Wayne was had a million dollar estate, um, but was not of sound mind, shall we say. So um and just a quick disclaimer, uh, he claims he was experimented on, I believe. Um uh, with by the government, I don't know if that's true or not, but you'll understand why when why I mention that now rather than there. Um, but I like Wayne most of the time; he, he was very entertaining. Um, but only in the world of Bill McGregor do these things happen. Um, so anyway, so as you can imagine, everybody listen to this. This is late. I've had a long day. The, the, the train journey now is 12 hours. Back then, it, it was quick. It was like actually just under nine hours. Um, but because of this craziness with Bill, it's still 12 hours and beyond. So anyway, it's, it's late at night. Um, we go past Niagara Falls. We get it to freshen up. Quick couple of photos. Uh, little detail I missed out on the way there. Uh, I was about to say about Wayne. Wayne, I'm sat in the back with Wayne, and the other person um, in the front with Bill was somebody who uh, we'll call the Ghost Rider, who was one of my best friends, and you'll understand why I'm saying that at some point down the line. And, um, so yeah, so basically, um, Wayne nudges me and he's like, 
this huge vat of cans of like Red Bulls and not Red Bulls because they didn't dr- drink the stuff with the taurine in, but you know, those energy drinks, um, the natural ones, natural. Um, so, and I'm like, what's this for? And he's like, make sure he doesn't go to sleep. He can crash or something like that. And I'm like, that's very relevant why I mentioned this, right? Because there's some episodes with crashing in this. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm not a guy who leans on ad hominem attacks, but, you know, Bill's jam jar glasses and that almost toupee looking hair he has. It's cartoon, cartoon character time, right? Um, but uh, especially when he shakes like that when he's preaching and it almost looks like it's going to fall off. Um <laughs> gives two pay a bad name but no so anyway we're we're we're, we're getting we, we we get there we go past hamilton uh we get into uh toronto and for anybody who doesn't know toronto there's an area called scarborough which is kind of like the how how shall i say this in a nice way that's the sort of more rough end don't get me wrong there's some nice parts to scarborough but um and there is some real money there but we were in the um the rough range, shall we say. And um, so anyway, we get there. And, you know, the Bible speaks a lot about hospitality, you know, and the Bible also speaks about how everything is done decently and in order, right, which we all probably know. And so this is now quite late. You know, it's it's crazy time because I can't remember how much time we spent in Niagara. And um, so... Bill's like, oh, just I'll, un- I'll get one of the guys to unlock the door. And uh, so somebody unlocked it from the inside, and I, d- I didn't see who- see who this was. Anyway, so Brother Wayne gets out with me, and um, we go inside. Wayne toddles off. I'm still trying to find where the light switch is. Bill drives away. And, like, I'm like, oh, like, get my torch out on my phone. <laughs> like... <laughs> Uh, where is this? You know, uh, I walk past the baptismal tank, which later turned out to be my bed, <laughs> sleeping on top of the baptismal tank. Anyway, so I, I go down the basement, make my way down the basement, and like I'm horrified because you can only imagine like the journey I've had um, to go from the Queen Mary two to like this, and I'm in this basement. And I kid you not, like, uh, sorry, Wayne's laid in his bed. There's two two big sections of this basement. Wayne's like, oh, yours is just through there, James. So I go through there, and I'm starting to think, why is there loads of women's, women's things around and stuff? And I'm like, I don't know. Somebody could have stayed here in the emergency. You know, it's obviously just meant to be males. Obviously, you would think, right, blah, blah, blah. So... I'm looking around in the dark and I'm like, oh no, here's the bed. And there was no mattress, no pillow, no bed, nothing. Just like those wo- double wooden beds where it's just the thick lats, the cheap ones. And I'm like, oh no. So I just had to like, I thought I am going to like ball him out so much in the morning <laughs> and like get this bed and sorted and everything. But for tonight, you know, do you know what? Like, I'm not prissy. Yes, I like my home comforts, but I'm not prissy where I need it to be. So I'm like, okay, let me just roll some crap up out my uh, long hauler and I'll make a pillow. And I'm just so tired at this point, as you can imagine, thinking, right, just let me just close my eyes and I'm laid down on the bed. And I'm just I'm like, oh, no, because I, I, when I go to sleep, I like a sleep mask. So I thought, oh, I'll just get my sleep mask out. Just about to put my sleep mask on. I open my eyes and it's just like, I see this like huge lady, <laughs> like tall, like about six and a half foot tall, standing above me with head upside down inverted, just staring at me like this. No, no silence, no hello, nothing. Just like, and I'm like, uh, and I was just like, it, like, you know, I couldn't see because the shape and the dark and everything. And I was just like, there was sort of a bit of light from the corridor, from the stair. It was very hard to sort of give you all the extraneous details. But basically, like, it was weird, right? 
and I was just like, this isn't no Norma Bates kind of situation, is it here, right? So anyway, I'm just like, I thought, I just can't deal with this. So I just shut my eyes, woke up the next day, and I'm like, tell Bill about my bedding. Oh, yeah, like, I was all surprised and everything. Like, there was no bedding. Like, Bill, you know, come on. So anyway, I'm like, what's the deal with this woman staying here? Now, I didn't know this at this point, but Bill's such a con artist that, like, when people ever watch his church, there's a reason why he doesn't show you the seating in there because he gets a lot of the um, unfortunate people and um, hobos and different people and everything. And like drug addicts, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much, yeah, to go and fill the church up. So it looks like it's busy when people <laughs> are coming past. And he obviously has them doing all sorts, and we'll get on to this in a bit, right? So anyway... Um, so basically i um i go upstairs and um i'm like what is this there's just trash everywhere and i'm like again like kind of like being semi-delicate of just like what's going on do you know what i mean and um yeah so um what was what was i going to come on to next so there's like uh i don't know if this is we've maybe jumped but like touch-ups pyramid tech driveways or is that what was in the first one again just new york to niagara was the first one mm. and then the Done, woman yeah. falling asleep yeah you've, i think you've covered all of those mm-hmm. and the next bit is like touch-ups pyramid tech the crash oh okay 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 right okay right yeah yeah, so basically, um, so after a, a couple of days of, of getting everything I needed and whatnot, I'm like, Bill works for himself. Now, I use the word works very carefully because I will give Bill his credit. He works hard at creating a mess, um, but quality is definitely not one thing and you're about to understand the world's about to understand why um i wish i'd learned a lot of these skills when i was younger but i will say this i've never seen anybody like mr bean at work like bill um give you an example of this so like i say a couple of days have gone by you know um i'm gonna try and help bill out by like giving him some personal relief in his workload you know, he wants to commission me as an evangelist and this and that. And I'm like, Bill, like, let's just worry about getting getting some of your workload done so we can free up some ministry time. So I'm out going around all these places uh, with Bill and I'm doing a bit of driving for him. Some touch-up jobs I learn pretty quickly. So I'm, do- I'm doing these things for him because normally I'm a white-collar salesman guy, as you all know. Um and uh but when cash in hand is needed and all that so anyway i'm doing them doing these things and um i'm starting to notice when i'm driving about like i'm getting funny looks and stuff and i'm like okay i've noticed that and now it moves on to where me and bill are in the van and i'm noticing bill driving to different jobs and bill's not actually doing anything he's just going in and I can see this slowly escalates from like people being friendly with Bill to kind of having a sharp word with him <laughs> because I want to say Bill works in designer concrete in your driveway um, and it really is patchy to say the least. So just like in Bill's personality and you know, his church, there are a lot of cracks in this situation and um so yeah so we'd spend most of our days doing touch-ups rather than new jobs um but the the main thing i'm coming to um why why i said crash earlier um is so we're we're out on the job site and i've just got through the day before of bill telling me about how there's a secret he he just done that preach about if anybody knows it about the hundred and forty four thousand who he thinks have a secret ice base um the hundred and forty four thousand here on earth already by the way people in a secret in a ice secret base. Space in antarctica he says or something it's somewhere like in the antarctica i think he's <laughs> How did by you get his charts from and calculations <laughs> well you know bill hasn't been to bible college once he has two doctorates from bible college right so i guess in between all the junk they were teaching him right 
But yeah, Bill's a Bill's a charts guy, and, and I always thought it was funny because he never really condemned rugmanism and stuff like that. So and dispensationalism. So I already had my antennas up slightly while we're, we're talking through doctrine, obviously. Um, but yeah, so so we're out at this this job site, and um, he's told me, and we get onto the subject of the pyramids, right? Well, we're talking. I can't remember. Uh, I think we we're talking about schematics and things like that, and we we're talking about like because I'm no builder, but I'm just like we we're talking about how it's like a like a slip and curve situation they use and stuff. And he then thinks, well, you know, it could have been ancient technology, and the the, the pyramids were put there with propulsion system. And I was like, oh, what have we got going on here now? So. Is it I like just, as in Neph- Nephilim Genesis six aliens yeah, type stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of, you've got it all. It's all in there. Of course, it is. I mean, I've I've actually skipped a bit the first time I went soul winning, but I'll tell you that bit in a second because I've got to tell you this bit about the crash, the first of many. By the way, this is where like who somebody shouldn't be pastoring. And again, previous pastors we talked about, Bill had three wives, just casually dropped that in one day um, from all different parts of the world. Um, But this thing with this crash, this was unbelievable because we're outside this customer's house and I can see they've got a brand new car parked in the driveway. And the way Bill has to reverse this car, I'm like, Bill, you need to get out and do it from a different angle. Pardon me, or let me do it, right? So basically... I was like, I can do it for you. Um, And he was like, no, no, I've got it. Well, obviously, Bill with those jam jar glasses, you know. So, sure enough, right, so Bill's like, oh, no, looks at me, and I'm like, well, what do you want me to do about it, Bill? You've just crashed in them. I told you I should have done it. Anyway, so Bill jumps out the car real quick in a flap, sweat going everywhere. He's opened the doors up. He's like, quick, help me hide this. I'm like, what do you mean, hide it? Like, like I want to tell him exactly what happened. And, like, he's looking at me as if to say, like, help me, you know. So he's hiding the doors because it's gone reverse into the bumper, right? And so, like, he's, he's getting all the cans out to put, like, some sort of barrier between them. And then, like, the people come outside and they're like, whoa, we heard a bang somewhere. And Bill's like, did you? And I'm like... And, and so he's built such a convincing, like, bs These people are starting to believe him. And I'm stood, like, two foot away, obviously. Poor sods. Poor sods. And so Bill turns around to me to validate it. And what do you think I did when he turned around to me and went, James, did you hear anything? And I'm like, well, why, yes, Bill. It, you just drove into their car, right? <laughs> so, like... <laughs> so, like... The, this is the thing with Canadian people, you have to understand, they're so compliant and, and don't want to, even more so than British people, they don't want to believe something is true, right? So, like, the people are like, oh, really? I didn't see anything? And I'm literally pointing at where it's just crashed into it, right? Like, like that. And they're just, the end of going back in and stuff, and it was just just a farce everything bill did was a farce like down to like i say we'll touch on that bit the first day i went out with him soul winning again brother wayne bill's given wayne an evangelist certificate the only person i've ever known who's evangelist and i've never heard preach the gospel once (laughs) right this this ought to tell you some things right but anyway we're out soul winning and so Bill's like in this woman's house and he's like, invite the neighbors around and get everybody around. And these families are coming in. And like, so Bill's like trying to qualify everything as we do. We're all going through the steps. And, and I could just tell these people weren't getting it, but they were just like entreating them really well. And when he was like, his attention was distracted for a moment, speaking to this other person in the room, I said to this lady, um, I was like, you understand what's being said right now? And she's like, I- I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And then Bill's like running back to the church going, look how many people we got saved today. We've got a room full of people saved and this and that. And I'm like, you know, sometimes, you know, we've been out and even in perfect English, you know, the, the situations where we can go through stuff and, you know, we can all second guess stuff. But I just, it was just this scattergun approach kind of like you know like 
the best way I can describe Bill is like the David Brent of pastors, right? <laughs> For anybody who knows the office, right? Bill is Brent, right? That big goggly eyed, like bitch boy kind of, I don't know, just, just y'all know Bill, right? Y'all know Bill. So no, don't get me wrong. I'll get, I will give Bill a couple of props to be honest with you. You know, with Bill, when he's not playing up, nah, he's not the worst guy in the world. I'll, I'll tell people that right now. He's just an idiot, right? So basically, um, to give you an example of this, is uh, here's another infamous crash. I say crash. So Bill has a big glass window in in, in the in the church, and um, he'd reversed the car into the window. And then so the other people at the church are like, what's happened here? So rather than Bill just owning up to saying, hey, like, I don't know if it was his dad or him, but it was one of them anyway. Rather than just open up to it, it was like they made this whole elaborate story up that, like, some drunk had fallen from next door. Because, of course, the church was built onto a nightclub next door. Like, never never preached the gospel to him once. I was there two minutes and we preached the gospel, right? So, um, yeah, so they tried to make this story that one of the people from the nightclub had fell into the church window and this and that. And I'm like, yeah, but Bill, it's like perfect light. It's perfect alignment where the, the car is there with the light and you could see the indentation and <laughs> He's everything. He's got something it's... pathological. <laughs> and, uh, genetically bad drivers. Yeah, so I'm just like, this is insane. Um, and anyway, um, I think I, th I think the thing is that the one of the big takeaways was like, if you, well, the reason why I say David Brent, one of the aspects and char characteristics of Brent, shall we say, is that he's all seeking fame, right? You know, kind of mentions that in the Bible about fame and riches, right? And um, so he's always talking about this book deal, and Bill uh, wrote a book called The Tuning Fork, or what I call The Tuning Spark. Um, it's, and... it's a very odd title, though, isn't it, for a Christian book? Because if you think Tuning Fork, you think of like Bethel and the New Age witchcraft stuff. That's it's it, a very right? odd title for a an end times book because he is a bit end times obsessed isn't it i guess that's what the book's about oh it's it's all about the end times it's all like any any idiot it's all about the end times so basically this tune and fork again if you think of the the bit in the episode with brent and the christmas special i think it's on where he's talking about how many like records he sold and gareth's like yeah his mates bought a load of them because he felt sorry for him. It's 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 that kind of thing because what I subsequently found out near where I used to live, my nearest and dearest part of uh, Malton and um, uh, Medford in New Jersey, Bill has a, a brother-in-law uh, of one one of his wives um, who has uh, apparently two garages full of this book that hasn't sold right so they're just they're just stacked up in a garage but yeah to stay on point about this book thing he's he's wrote another book and i don't know if anybody remembers this but we'll give him a good refresher of this so because he's trying to get um what i think is wayne's million dollar estate into his name he's like um telling all this crap and trying to get Wayne on board about like this book and this and that. And so he's ringing publishers, chasing them every two minutes. But now what the world doesn't know is Bill's not writing his own material. He's feeding a ghostwriter some ideas. Remember when I said ghostwriter? So who I now know is a, is, is a lovely, lovely person um, who like is a lot younger than Bill and a lot more mature um, and um, is basically doing all of Bill's work because Bill um, is is not smart enough to do it himself. Uh, is is the is the crux of this, um, and to the point where even she stopped doing the ghost writing for him because Bill was just changing the, the story every week about like oh, how all false prophets do where it's a sense of oh well 
and again, this is all out there for everybody to listen to on the internet, where he says, oh, well, there's a tsunami going to come into New York. And then it was changed to a warhead. And then the dates were changed. <laughs> Sounds a bit like John Hagee, right? Uh, and all these other idiots. So that's the kind of thing that, that that's going on. And, and that was always there all the time. And it was just a weird, as you could only imagine, it was so weird because we'd have to drive up to what I was led to believe was a secure compound all the way where the Amish are. And for anybody who doesn't know Canada, this is like sort of two, three, four hours north, depending on which route you go out of Toronto. There's a, there's like a big lake there called Oshawa. And it's a beautiful place, to be fair. Um, and Bill made out there was all this land where it was just a tiny little plot, really, in reality. And there was a motorhome on there, and he grew all this stuff on there that never got used, like all this food, this fruit and vegetables. Now, you'd think this was being used for prep, but obviously it was being harvested all the time, right? And, like, it, it was never used. I never saw any produce brought back to this day. So I don't know what was going on. And all he ever told me was it was for his wife. Well, here's the thing. The other layer to this layer cake that's constantly going on is um, his wife ringing him up all the time. And I used to think, why does Bill leave his phone sometimes in there? But, but his, like, his wife never came to church with him though, right? I only ever seen her um, in church once. I might have been twice. And this is hashtag she, third wife, isn't it? This is third wife, yes. From I think she's from Panama. Um, so, yes, that's right, because we missed the key detail out before I met Bill to come over that just a week before I was about to come over one of our last conversations. Sorry guys. I'm just remembering this on the fly. Right. I didn't want to do load by notes. I just wanted to remember it as natural as I can. Um, and I think it's maybe to give Bill a bit of slack to be fair, because there's so much to remember. And he said, Oh, don't worry about meet me in um, Canada. We may need you to meet you in Mexico. And I'm like, right. He's like, I may need to get you a big brown envelope and it's going to be filled with a lot of cash. And you're going to meet somebody in a property in the field in the middle of nowhere near Juarez. And I'm like, right. Like a drug deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is, this is bonkers. Anyway, he turns a couple of days later. He's like, forget about what I said. Just, just come here. So, yeah, uh, that was something. I'm, I'm sorry I missed that out, but it's just, it's, it, it, honestly, it's the stuff of movies. It's the stuff of Hollywood, right? So I'm like, right, okay. So in between the, the layers, like I say, I've got his wife ringing him up and swearing up in Spanish uh, all the time. <laughs> and basically, she put Bill to work so he could. Um, go out and earn all the money and spend it on useless crap. And I've never been to a house where we, you know, people, you know, embellish things and, 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 and talk about, well, the house was like a hoarding house. No, no, it's the first time I've ever seen in the flesh, my own eyes, a house that is, was a hoarding house. And we'll get to that in a bit because this is an important point about this, um, about uh, Halloween. Um, anyway, so... um. So basically, uh, this layer cake of, of all these different myriad of things going on. And let's not forget as well, he used to let a lot of the hobos go up to the farm and pretend he was giving them a holiday when basically they were growing pills of vegetables for no reason. <laughs> right? And then he ended up saying it's a holiday, so you actually owe me money now. Right? Okay. So, you know, just the myriad of things is, is just so much. Um, and obviously, um, there's, there's, there's so much, so much going on at this point. Um, uh, what else? Other well, notes? Well, because you're on, you're on the house, right? So the house was like a, you, you were about to describe the house when you got all this crap. Oh, that okay, had. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Bill one day said, "Forget our normal jobs. What I've, what I want you to do is, I've got some work at my own house today. So rather than us turn up to work and do normal customers' house and with the 
um, re- I'll say repairing paveways rather than making them. Um, he's like, I've got, I've got to clear out my apartment um, and move stuff to my other home. I'm like, yeah, okay. So basically, I'm, I've never seen nothing like this. Like you say, you watch an episode of Hoarders and you're like, wow, this is what it's really like to see this. So I didn't want to go in the house. I'm just dealing with stuff before we even get into the house of like pallets and pallets and pallets of stuff on Bill's veranda. And I'm like, oh, to be respectful, there's lots of, there's lots of people. Um, so I'm like, oh man, because the, the, the apartment's there, they, they've got it. The kind of, even though there's all this stuff there, people can see. So I'm like, I really need the toilet. I mean the toilet for pee for ages. So I'm like, right, I'm going to have to, not that I want to go in the house. He's not told us where the bathroom is, so I'm going to have to make my way through there. So I climb between these cri- these pallets, and it's just a myriad of stuff. I'm talking like f- feet off the ground, right? And my foot slips through <sighs> into this box. And I'm like, oh, no, I hope I haven't broken nothing. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, as we all would think, right? So I'm like, wait, what is that? So I clear the items out the way that's on the top, pull my foot out, and I'm like, oh, my word. It's a huge box full, and I'm talking not like one or two things, like a huge box full of Halloween items. So it's just like, wow, and there was so much there, wasn't there? That was just on one box. Then as I'm trying to step out of this, and trying to not break anything because you can imagine the hoarding house is very hard to do right. My foot has then gone through, as you know, another box. And what is there again? Just more Halloween stuff. I make my way in the house. And I, I've, I, it was just one of those things where you see bored housewives or whatever it is and people who just hoard things and spend the money just for no reason. And part of me maybe felt a little bit sorry for you but the other side me felt so angry with bill with not ruling his house well and um yeah um i mean the the impression i got that lady's got a green card do you know what i mean for canada that's the impression i got um and because nobody you wouldn't let nobody treat you like that you know um but yeah that that was just very very bizarre and Bill, um, when I left there, uh, to give you an example, one of the hobos um, that was there had a spare mattress the whole time that I wasn't even aware of because I used to have to sleep on top of the baptism tank, people. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so there's a guy who used to come to church who, who like didn't know much Bible, but he was a you know kind of a nice honest enough guy um dan and um basically bill had a had a go about him about something one day and um he asked him some very basic scripture and bill got really angry with him and threatened to throw him out the church so this guy really wanted to help me so it was like hey you you know come come and stay at my place for a little bit while you get yourself sorted and find it find a nice apartment or whatever and um so yeah so basically um this soft mattress that the guy didn't have a spare bed so it was only for like a week obviously while i got sorted so i i i was like bill i'm taking this right till i get sorted so what does Bill do? About three days later, comes around, hey, I need that mattress. I'm like, Bill, are you going to deprive um, a brother of a bed? Is that what you're telling me? And he's like, yeah, but like just, uh, and I was like, did you or did you not say that? And he's like, ah, ah. and as, as Bill does, he backtracks out of everything. So anyway, he left with his tail between his legs, as you can only imagine. Um, but all I would say is this is like, one of the benefits of doing this interview is not just to bash Bill. It, it, it's to have a bit of humor, but it's also to have, um, to give you an inner side into like, you know, when, when people, people who 
and biblically literate or haven't done a lot of ministry think they're going to be doing things with you know um a level-headed pastor and yet little did he know that you know um it's like a warning for people to help people that like you know stay away from this guy you know he's not dangerous uh, in the sense of like you know he, he's an axe murderer or nothing but he's dangerous in the sense of that like he's all over the place you know um and the the if you just go back and listen to all the predictions he's made you know the bible talks very clearly about what the penalty is for a, a, a prophet who you know the, the the word is returned void right when it comes to prophecy and you know um it's is it's just a very strange strange guy um that like cuts corners you know as salesmen we can all cut corners but what we don't cut corners with is god's word you know um but yeah the the there's you know there's there's probably so many things that i could say on here that i've like forgot or just blotted out of my mind or uh or whatever um and i've literally had like people come in and just like you know um point stuff out in scripture to bill and he's been like you know that kind of like robert breaker moment of like and he's like he just does not have no answer he sort of freezes like brent a bit and he's like uh just kind of you know so there's many little nuances and just there's a minutia of things that like i've seen um but um yeah it's it's uh it's really interesting um but um yeah but the important message in the takeaway is um stay away from uh trinity baptist church toronto um unfortunately there are there are only lots of pro zionist uh people there i believe there's an andersonite click in there somewhere but unfortunately in toronto itself and in canada there aren't any um solid churches that i'm aware of um but uh yeah um anything else you want well, to know yeah, i mean you've covered quite a lot of things on this but i, I think you, you almost touched on it but then it kind of moved away like you mentioned about okay. he has to keep his phone in the church because he's because of his wife and she's always swearing at him and he has to like drive <laughs> people home yeah just talk about that briefly yeah like i said i thought it was strange at, at first and um i i i thought like um oh it's it's uh it's it's just people who were bothering him you know with, you know all the uh, you know the andersonites uh bothering him and stuff because there was that whole thing where they were rubbishing bill for when bill and quite rightly so for when bill was pretending to be his dad <laughs> to join the soul one soul winning marathon movement but um, bill kept but throwing jabs was, at them though didn't he it's just important to he did he, he yeah, that's saying, rather than just leaving it alone bill kept throwing the jabs right and um the only time i actually like helped bill was just like um when there was something with one of their lot on that to hey and they said something about his dad and like i was like you won't be doing that so obviously naturally folks as you know me i had a word with that situation that got resolved but um but yeah no the uh, so that the phone would just go all the time and then I realized who it was one day when we're out working shortly after Bill's like, he's like in this like quiet mode of just like, Hey, we've got to go and get this done or whatever. And like this person's like, you got to come now, now. <laughs> so we just do a 360, come back. And she's like, I want this, 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 da, 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 da. I want this. And it was just, and I was just like, and he looked at me as if to say, like, help almost. And I'm like, control that. Like, just, you know, like, you know, Freddie, when any women watching, I'm really sorry. But, like, if that was my wife speaking like that to me, like, you know, the taste might be coming out of your mouth. <laughs> you know, like, just like, 
I, I just found it really like disrespectful. I mean, a lot of Christian women just wouldn't do that, you know. Um, and so I asked her about a background, and I think he said obviously Pentecostal. Um, again, like I say, I've I only seen them from distinct memory once at church, um, but um, yeah, I just I just remember like if Bill would sometimes leave his phone overnight at church and I'd have to go and switch it on silent. I didn't want to go into his phone, obviously, but then I'm seeing this plethora of messages of like, wow, I'm not even going to say them because, I, 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 you know, I don't want to be like disrespectful to people in the sense of reading out personal messages. I just, but uh, believe me, folks, when you see it and like, you see like, like stalking, like kind of like dum dum dum, and I'm thinking, well, no wonder he leaves his 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 phone overnight, you know. But, but um, did she did she track him because she said he used to leave his phone at church while he'd go and drive people home from church? I wonder if she could track him with that phone. Or something. Well, here's the thing: we thought she had an air tag on him. <laughs> like because it was always she always knew exactly where he was and stuff and she'd be ringing other people and stuff and it'd be like i'm glad she didn't have my now obviously if she asked my phone number i wasn't going to give her it, but she i never like i said i only met her once from memory um was that presumably and, when you went to her house no i oh. didn't i think she sorry sorry she just left then in one of the other vehicles i'm thinking where she was in a church setting oh, and right. she come and, and sat down and stuff and um but, i mean she's got to be not right in the head as much as him i mean because as well as the hoarding problem at house you said there were loads of cat litter everywhere or something oh and just, just piles you think of like all the aspects of hoarding not just like buying useless stuff and storing up useless treasure i'm talking about like like just piles of food everywhere i'm talking literal piles of food everywhere and then piles of cat litter on the floor and they, oh, they, didn't, even, just, they didn't even own a cat litter right? they didn't it's even own a cat, cat I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just i don't know i it, this is really really bizarre um but yeah it's comedy gold with bill like it all is. the I mean, time even, like le leaving aside all of your stories just the doctrine that he comes out with. I mean, we've mentioned the 144,000 being in an ice tunnel under Antarctica or something. There's, did he say that, like, the New Jerusalem was on the planet Saturn or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. The, 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 he's, you know, whatever you take into Saturn earlier, you take into Saturn earlier. But there was just... There was so, so many. Um, but it was just funny how, you know, like when he kept changing the storyline with the book and like it's like when i think when john hagee said like oh well something did happen in israel like a little red bird touched the roof of something something when important this major... happened that day i don't know what but <laughs> yeah. something happened yeah. <laughs> yeah it was that kind you'd of think, like if we were really at the end times like he thought we would we constantly are you wouldn't think that selling a book is quite high on your priority but it sounds almost like a scam to get people to buy the book and then he thought this book would do really well, and really nobody bought it, did they? Well, that was it, and and, to, and you've hit that. You've just made remember something about because there was uh, one day we were in the car, and me and the ghost rider we looked at each other because he's like, "Oh, it's right at the end. I think it, we're right at the end now." You know, the mark of the beast is coming, the form of the vaccine, and um, he was like, he was like, you know, um, but. Uh, and then he just turned around and it was almost like a ksh, ksh, like sills and mod. He just went, turned around to the ghostwriter and went, well, if this book goes well, maybe we can get a full book series out of it. I'm <laughs> just like... A book series for every prediction that the world's going to win. Every, yeah. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Well, I'm just like, this is not real. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned, you mentioned Mark of the Beast there. What is it? He's got Mark, uh, Mark of the Beast at his mum's house or something? What? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So what I... <laughs> Again, remember at the time, guys, we're dealing with the, you know, the scamdemic and, you know, people like Bill are going to take it to the max and be like, this is the mark of the beast. You know, I'm not saying like we're looking at pre -pro as we now think Neuralink, Cullen and all these things make sense, technology. But I was always sceptical that it could have been that, um, you know, because I didn't see anybody bowing down to the image. So, but what, what was, I say funny, but not funny at the same time was, so 
Bill's dad used to come to the church. And bearing in mind, Bill's mom is younger than Bill's dad. I never saw her once. And in conversations when I passed them, she's biblically, somewhat biblically literate. But I just found it so funny that, like, but not funny at the same time, like, Bill's, like, saying, if you've had the vaccine, you're doomed. There's nothing you can do. All we can do is just personally counsel you. And then he'd be like, oh, hi, mom, let's go for dinner. <laughs> and just like his mom's talking about taking the vaccine and stuff. And it's just like, oh, it just. And his dad honestly, presumably was... there when he preached that sermon as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. his, yeah, his very, dad owned very the church bizarre. like on paper, right? His dad actually owned it, but Bill just did a lot of the preaching, I guess. He... Well, basic, basically, Bill circumvented his role as somebody who should have just been sat in a pew to be the pastor because he's like, well, my dad gets tired and everything like that. And, like, you know, rather than his dad coming out and saying, hey, I'm authorizing my son to to do this because of my ill health and I've come out of retirement or whatever and this and that, it just all seemed like a money-making scam. Um, when God's not in something, he's really not in it, right? And that's why it was just disaster after disaster after disaster. Um, but the thing is, it because was like, Bill's still quite well off from his business, it's sort of like the disaster keeps on going, isn't it? It's like Fox Towers is <laughs> right. always another episode. That's it, right? And it, and, and like every two minutes, it's just like... This book deal, the money as well has come from the book deal, I think was coming from Brother Wayne's estate, from what I can piece together. It seemed really obvious to that, which is why they could afford to pay this ghostwriter. But to be fair to the ghostwriter, when after that thing, what I just mentioned about with that thing, where about the series, she was like, I'm not doing this no more. She had a conscience yeah. check and was like, I'm not doing this no like more. She was being trapped into what she thought was a liability, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Oh, yes, because yeah. he turned up to her house one day and was like, where's that money I dropped earlier? And she rang him up the next day and was like, Bill, don't ever come to my house again. Yeah. Like, you know. I mean, why like, does she even have some of his money in the house anyway? That's it's all really odd. But yeah, then Bill like, McGregor. Oh, well, that answers the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. is it worth, like, because you mentioned. Like you mentioned he probably got a lot of money off Wayne, right? Because Wayne, and again, he's not the only person from that end of the pond where you tell me he's a complete nutter, but still really rich mm -hmm. as well. Kind yeah. of like a crazy contradiction. So tell us a bit more like, like about Wayne. What was Wayne like? What was the, his deal? Because he died as well, didn't he? Some, yeah, yeah. yeah Brother, Brother Wayne awesome. sadly died. Um, because from what I understand from Wayne, um, Wayne spent 20 years in prison in a federal federal penitentiary um because this was in the 80s when judges handed out a prison sentence like confetti in the wrong state and i think i can't remember if he was in uh, la at the time um but it was a lot more tougher back then and basically he'd rang up drunk one night threatening to which he fully to be fair to Wayne he fully admits that he shouldn't have done it but at the same time he, from what I understand it was the only like criminal offence if you like he'd ever done wrong he'd rang up and threatened to I think blow a building up but when he was drunk now for anybody who's not in America who's somebody who lives there a lot of the time that you don't want to do that <laughs> so we would think put this down to like just drunkenness or whatever well he actually got 20 years for that so um and then that, that like sounds say, quite the, serious for a drunk event do you think they, they determined something a bit more psychological behind it than <laughs> well, that's subjective i don't honestly know um but it, it, it's the from the couple of people who were around these people they do corroborate what seems to have happened to him and i think he's just been really unlucky and then given what we now know about how the people experiment on people in the present in the prison industrial complex i do believe what he's telling me but unfortunately it because of as a, as a like result of that it it's, it can sound like the words are not so given what he's told me and 
the validation of the people who are sound mind who've known him a long time, then yeah, I, I think something may have happened to him. So no doubt it has, but but the con the full sort of how that's threshed out, I, I don't know what they've done. Um given given but, that he was uh, quite he was quite rich, he had quite a lot of money right before he, he died. You think mm-hmm. Bill was trying to use him really? Was he well yeah b- because I, I think well, to, to this day, you know, right before I'd left, um, it, Wayne had bought a nice RV and he was going to get me to go down and pick it up for him because Wayne didn't drive because of his medical conditions, right? Because he had a, a problem with his heart. Probably didn't help the fact he used to drink a six-pack of Mountain Dew every day. <laughs> um, bless him. Um, but um i'm sure if i had to spend 20 years in the slammer for something like that and all the rest of it you know uh but anyway so Wayne was going to get me to pick this rv up now where is that rv today the last thing i heard was um from the ghostwriter that bill mcgregor has the keys for it and was even too lazy to go and pick his free collection up himself and send his brother-in-law down i think his calvinist brother down to get it um so yeah um it definitely seemed that way to me especially like i say with this whole chase and the, their whole conversation was around the book deal the book deal the book deal thing all the time and i could see like he would speak about this in conversation with eschatology with us naturally sometimes but his whole conversation with Wayne was about the eschatology all the time. I never saw them talk about anything else. He is obsessed with end times, isn't it? But then it's you know it's the same thing with like the JWs and the SDAs. That's all part of the manipulation sometimes. And it's like it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's like I spoke about that with that Mike Rakowski block in, in a previous video. But um, sometime after you returned to the UK, mm-hmm. Bill, Bill was in the news, wasn't he? He got the mayor to come over, and he was doing a barbecue. <laughs> So, oh, yes, this is brilliant, this one. So, um, so basically in Canada, during this time, we had a, a lot of, um, uh, like around the world, but particularly in Canada, we had a lot of, uh, while they're destroying Western society, obviously, a Christianized society, we had a lot of real rebellion, right? And um, uh, uh, Chris, um, with the Nashes, um, what's his surname again? Um kept getting arrested and everything anyway he um he's now running for mayor and because he stood up to the establishment bill's like desperate because this guy's getting published and <laughs> he's getting like attention from the media and stuff so bill uh so what the ghostwriter told me was like bill's like uh tried to hijack this situation and he spent like like thousands of dollars on chairs for this event expecting like 2000 people to show up or something and like they told me that like basically not even 200 people (laughs) turned up to this event and so he has nowhere to put all these chairs and stuff now and everything and it's just this huge debt even if they don't turn up he's got a tiny premises hasn't he and it's a small car park it's it is it's a tiny tiny car park. Um, I mean, the only way he go he would have got away with it was because it was a Sunday, so the rest of the strip miles closed, uh, and the nightclub obviously doesn't open till at least ten o'clock on the afternoon. So that was the only reason I think he would have got away with it and held it there. Um, but um, I forgot that Chris's surname. You, you all will know him when you see him. Well, we can we can um, do like an overlay if he's the guy was running for mayor. Um, we could see if we can do yeah. an overlay later. But uh, he was he was doing a barbecue, wasn't he? And he got put in the news <laughs> for that. Was it? Yeah. He was, was it because he was handling sausages with his bare hands? <laughs> yeah, because you know how liberal it. Canadians are, right? People were actually. He was in the news for um, being unsanitary. Now, here's the thing. Me knowing how dirty Bill is, yeah, yeah, I'm sure if, there was no doubt it was unsanitary because, like, I've seen him prepare food where with that toupee looking like, but it's real hair, by the way, people. It just moves when he's doing it. Um, I've seen him sweat and sweat and sweat, and he's probably, um, I can imagine the sweats like fell into the, the burks or whatever. Um, 
but yeah, um, I'd, and I can't remember if it was actually a food critic or not who just happened to be in the audience or or something like this. But um, yeah, it always seems to backfire on Bill, no matter what. Yeah. So yeah, um, I think we've pretty much covered. Um, everything then i mean i don't know if there's anything else you want to tell about your crazy time in canada because obviously i mean i know like he, he didn't really put you up properly in terms of accommodation he wasn't mm. really paying you properly for the work that you did for him and then obviously after this all you ended up on homeless didn't you so you had to go to that technically for place. a week yeah um mm. so basically uh luckily through friends um i i till i could source my own uh apartment um i got to meet some great people um um uh, in ministry um and uh you know we, we it, it, it worked you know um so that was that um and it just shows you that like you know i think when god's looking after you, he's gonna look after you. um if you you know if 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 you've um which is brings me back to my original point where like i always want to meet people fresh and not try and judge people off what i've heard so much um and i think that's like an endearing quality that we should always try and have um you know we have wisdom and discernment but like um obviously but um you know it just shows you what can can happen and um again it goes back to my other point as well i'm you know maybe somebody who's not as well connected as myself would have found that very very difficult and um you know um somebody maybe a bit more timid or whatever but like it's it's how unscrupulous people like bill operate and stuff um they have no place in ministry and this is even um, someone who's supposedly preaching the right gospel, right? If if we can say, that's he what I'm preach it. And yeah, it just comes out with like crazy stuff. Yeah, it's it's it it's it, every every. It's not like how could you say this? It's, it wasn't just a thing that like there was controversy every week. There was controversy every day, like every day without fail. There was a crisis every day. <laughs> so so like. It was it, it was just really bizarre, but um, but yeah, I'm glad we can laugh about it sometimes. So, eventually, <laughs> yeah. Well, eventually, other, yeah. I mean, I know because we were going to do this interview about the first time in Canada, right? And mm. I think we've wrapped up most of the stuff that we were going to talk about. Sure. There's maybe a little bit of time before it's bedtime here in the UK, but mm -hmm. um, you've had a bit of a crazy a crazy history with crazy pastors, right? Because uh, I mean, that was your first visit to America to mm -hmm. Canada. You've been to Canada mm -hmm. a second time and come back to the UK. You've just recently mm -hmm. got back from America because you are like a boomerang. It doesn't matter how far I throw you, you always bounce back. <laughs> so you've been in America and been around a rather crazy pastor in New York. If you want to talk about anything that happened in America. Oh, yes. Um, so and This is what I'm trying to tell um, people. I'm trying to explain to my subscribers that you don't have a normal day. <laughs> no, I never have a normal day. Uh, never have a normal day. Um, so, basically, the the, the pastor that um, I was not affiliated with, but helping them out with transportation and things like that. Um, to give you an example, in my um, because I just moved from Florida, so I was only in New York for a, a couple of months um, whilst I was on preparing for my next uh, ministry out. And, um, and so I didn't know that they were like heavy dispensationalists at first. Anyway, um, so I remember um, quite vividly uh, the first day I was there, and I've never seen as many chick tracts in my life uh, to the point where it was a 15 foot ceiling and the boxes went up to 14 and a half feet wall to wall. <laughs> and chick tracts, for anybody who doesn't know, they often have repent of your sins on them, right? Yeah, it's very muddy. Um, and this guy's. Um, He's letting homeless people preach from the microphone who, who aren't saved. Just so, so many things. Um, and, 
you know, um, the first day I went into the cupboards for some some soup. Oh, there's a dildo in the cupboard. Like just like what? Like, you know, in just, the kitchen cupboard, right? In <laughs> the kitchen all, cupboard. Like, like wow. <laughs> I'm just like, oh no, um, and just I don't know, just really bizarre behaviour. And and then I went in the shower and he brought my neck because every day the guy has a shower, it's a fresh bar of soap, and there's just the bathtub is filled with. Uh, in America, we have Irish Spring soap, and it's just like piles and piles. And I used to have to like scoop them out every day. It was just uh, nuts, um, but. Uh, yeah, um, you'd always be speaking about Dr. Ruckman, and I'd be like, no, don't speak to me about Dr. Ruckman. So, um, but yeah, I remember, um, I remember him uh, saying we had to go and pick up some vans in Pennsylvania, and um, he was like, oh, well, I think they're okay. So, anyway. We get up and I see this absolute rust bucket of a van. I was like, are you sure this is going to make it on the way back down? And the guy's like, well, I hope so. Maybe if he hadn't put these 20,000 trick tracks in the van, it might not have helped. So anyway, I'm driving from Pennsylvania to New Jersey. So that's going to take you about from the top end to bottom about four hours, right? So I literally barely got just over halfway and I start seeing this like object hit my car and I'm like because the, the sorry I forgot to say there's another my van in front of us in convoy and I'm driving this van and it's just like wait what happened there and then all of a sudden smoke just started coming out of the engine I had to pull it over into the the middle lane highway expressway is closed at that time so all the lights are off like seven lane highway and then i had to like the van's engulfed in smoke and i'm like this thing's gonna blow up any second so i like i run out of the car grab my backpack off the seat and then i'm like oh man i'm in the middle of nowhere but because the way roads are in america you can't just turn around like in england or canada or whatever you have to keep going so that i'm on the f- ringing this like, guy on like his bluetooth carriageways are they right yeah 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 but like a like a seven dual carriageway <laughs> so i'm like i'm like ringing the guy on his bluetooth from my phone going hey man you got to pick up my location i'll try and send you where i am there's no street lights now all i can see a c- couple of miles in the distance through some fields is uh, amen i see the holiday express logo right and i'm like right I'm not in Florida, so I don't have my gun on me. I only have my knife. Like, so I, at least I've got something to protect myself with. Because there's all this, like, fields and, like, just crazy outbuildings and stuff. Very hard to imagine this industrial area. So, anyway, like, I'm absolutely cut to ribbons by climbing over all these fences and, like, having to cut branches down. And it's just crazy. And, like, if by this time I've got through all these things, the guys in there able to uh, turn back around and come up, and now he's trying to find me where I am and stuff. And I get there, and I'm just so thankful. Like the Lord blessed me with a undelivered pizza and bottle of orange squash um, to this hotel room. What they didn't want when I got to the Holiday Express. And I literally walked in and I, I must have looked like that bit in Kill Bill where she comes out the ground and she's covered in muck and everything. And just like I'm covered in all of this like splot and uh, it was just crazy. But that was just a regular, I guess, day for me um, in there. So, um, yeah, many examples. Um, I mean, there's all sorts but, of crazy stuff that's happened over there. I think it's just that like, I mean, some stuff maybe in America... We don't want to talk about it just because you wouldn't want to reveal the identity of, of the persons, I guess, because like they're still your mm. friends, right? They're just off the rocker. But um, oh yes, yeah. but yes. Like, it, when you've been in Canada the second time, it's like you said they, mm-hmm. they've legalized weed over there, right? So there's always some like some pothead wherever you go, and you, so you're still surrounded by crazy situations, even if it's not happening to you personally. Mm. Um. Yeah, I mean, like I say, I mean, I, I had to reprove a street preacher over there, and he's like, 
and he's like singing and taking money for the singing, but then preaching in between. He's like, hey, what are you saying? And I'm like, are you preaching the gospel, sir? Or whatever. And he's just like, get back from me, Satan. Woo! And I'm just like, that's that's just kind of the norm over there. It's that's, just that's like... Toronto for you, isn't it? That's your experience of Toronto. <laughs> Toronto, yeah. Because they put all the crazy people and the druggies and everybody and the people who were unfortunately not well, everybody together. So it's really, really crazy. Um, but yeah, I've, I've seen some... Um, I've seen some crazy things over there for sure. Yeah, I think it's like to give the back to give the audience a bit of background. Right, you hate this country, mm. you hate how libertad it is here, so you're constantly trying mm. to leave. But then every sure. country that you go to, you realise it's just as bad as here, just for a different reason. And it makes yeah. you appreciate home sometimes. Sometimes it does. Yeah, it's it's just a crazy situation. I think. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing: is there's like. Um, I think, like, being allowed to have seen all these things and experienced these things that, like, what I touched on in another video of, like, I am so, like, blessed and honoured and thankful for the Lord to have um, shown me all these things and having friends and connections around the world and everything. And, uh, you know, I'll never, ever take that for granted. And um, that's something that, like, is very humbling to me and, and because I realise that, you know, I'm a one of a small amount of people that can get to do that, and that's the serious side of it. But the funny side of it is, for anybody listening to this, is just I don't know why it is, but just every single person that I meet out there is batshit crazy. Um, oh, there's just some issue around. Like, give you a classic example. Uh, when I was in Florida and the pastor's like, hey, James, I've got you a job. I know somebody, um, you know, you can go from like essentially a semi um, citizen to like full citizen, blah, blah, blah. It's like, he's like, we'll sign the paperwork tomorrow. We'll get your legal papers done. You're going to get a job. About approximately eight hours later, the same day, he's like, Mm, yeah i don't I, I i don't know i think we'll we'll just can that and i'm just like what why what what like yeah what i'm telling everybody i've got this amazing opportunity and it's just and that's from somebody who would appeal you would consider sound so you know i won't reveal who that person is out of respect um you know but the reason why i say that is is just because I have this crazy lifestyle where in, in the ministry sense that like that's what happens and maybe it's it's um a thing to to give people some encouragement of like look the battlefields everywhere where we go N not everybody can do what I do uh, and I and I understand that but I know there'll be a lot of people out there who'll think oh well I'd love to go and do that and I'm not saying don't go and do it. All I'm saying is, is just be prepared that like for a lot of the countries in the world that I've done ministry in, especially in the Americas, that even people who you think like, well, these seem legit, like there's going to be some issue behind the scenes. Um, so just always bear that in mind is the moral and the lesson of this story um because you know um uh in in a in a, in a secular sense i had a thriving business awesome house awesome car all these uh things so i know what it's like to have that kind of lifestyle but then to see the other lifestyle of of, of like I guess not to put myself with the Apostle Paul, but having like spiritual shipwrecks everywhere we go and stuff. Um, it's like, yes, it's amazing, I guess, character building and stuff. But like, um, you know, um, it's there's just crazy times where people have like, 
you know, meant to have met you somewhere, or whatever, and you're locked down. You're like, it's a big thing over there when you don't have ID and stuff on you, and you're like, well, I can't get hold of nobody on the phone or whatever. And and there's been times where like amen that are going to stealth camping, where I've had to like in the city of New York, stealth camp by punching out holes in buildings and climbing up ladder frames and stuff, so I'm not on the street level where the crazy people are. And and there's there's many nuances and uh, like I say there's a minutiae of things that like have happened that like I say we can you know the time we we can touch more on this stuff um, but yeah um, I guess the question is would you swap it and I would say no because I wouldn't have all the stories to tell I wouldn't have all the experiences. Um, I've seen some great moments. Um, I've met like for all the crazy people, you know, there's, there's a lot of fun and, and, and things and just, um, you know, it's a good laugh. Um, but obviously the, the most crucial bit is get having salvations around the world and getting to, to preach to people and, and stuff. And, um, yeah, um, I mean, just a little disclaimer, um, uh, you know, there has been other parts of the world where I've like um, had had a, had um, stable events in, the, in terms of international ministry. Um, uh, domestic, as we know, has always been all right. But in terms of international, when I lived in Scandinavia, that, that no real issue there at all. That was actually to go to Canada the second time, wasn't it? So, you know, it's n- never. It just seems to be the Americas. Had, had to, I think as well, though, another that. small disclaimer is that you often end up you're relying on people who you don't necessarily know that well who say they're going to put you right. Up. And yes. even if if somebody doesn't really know who you are and they say yes, you can stay with me, they're probably a crazy person. <laughs> Because most that's people want oh, to know yeah. who you are before giving you free accommodation. Yeah, it's so not a British thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's them kind of things, and um, yeah. Um, but I guess another side of that is that the culture is so so different there. Uh, I think that's a big part to, of it, isn't it? Because I think, like, from our British perspective. I mean, mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we get eccentrics here, but we, we maybe don't feel like we're as crazy as the Americans, but it, it's kind of like we're just a bit more in the middle, we're a bit mellow, we don't express ourselves as much, we're a bit miserable, we don't have that happy culture that they have over there, but then you get to America and it's like all the extremes in both <laughs> directions, you know, it's like the most extreme of this type and the most extreme of their opposite, so you know, with Christianity it's just all the crazy cults through a magnifying glass it's like yeah we have crazies here but like put them through a magnifying glass and they're all over the americas at least that's our perspective no no audience. yeah and the thing is everybody who knows like you know someday amen I, I, because of my time and everything the citizenship i might be a, you don't know i might be a full dual citizen someday but what i'm getting at is like and what you're just getting at is is the extremes even to the point where how you touched on with just the, the even the nuance and the personality things like for example if you are you know if i'd have the last time i was speaking from the pulpit in florida and i made that like subtle joke like obviously i was being serious but it was kind of like a joke as well right like obviously in britain people would have just like not really said nothing there but like oh man that's blackball material there right you know so that's the extremes i guess what we're talking about yeah i guess they maybe could have taken it overly personally i guess not taking it as a joke yeah. or something yeah i mean i suppose yeah. like the thing is though in terms of how crazy bill was right you already mm-hmm. know. You already knew some of the weird stuff that Bill was teaching before mm-hmm. you went over there. So sure. some people would wonder why wasn't that kind of a red flag? Because it's kind of like you're the teenage girl going into a, a for a bad boy because you might fix him or something like. Do you know? That's probably not yeah. the best illustration. But I think I think at the time, what you have to remember around this is that because of lockdown. Um, and the opportunity to 
get away on a religious visa um whilst you know the, the, they're not even letting people to go out and exercise properly and stuff like on a personal level that was like a thing of like well of course i wouldn't have even touched him with a badge full if i'd heard any works as which as we know is kind of scary that the fact he actually portrays the right gospel um i'd only heard some like semi-serious stuff i guess and again like he's not correct in the dispensationalists and again to be fair i didn't know about the the anderson i thing at the time which had literally just happened and i wasn't aware of that right so the couple of little bits that i did know i didn't i guess on some surface level i guess i didn't want them to interfere with me uh traveling um so that's that was fair. probably well, there was the whole scare that countries were making it so you had to have the jab if you went over there right so mm. for you that created maybe a sense of urgency um and obviously now mm. we realize maybe it wasn't that big of a deal because that hasn't happened but you couldn't have known that at the time right you know the sense not, of no. urgency like you, you just got to get over there and try without getting the jab mm. and you were worried that they might mandate the jab over here and uh, and, and yeah and the thing is and the thing is uh, you know uh, one thing um was how zealous i am for for soul winning and um something we do a lot and the opportunity to do that um where very few people in the world do that anywhere because we know most to uh, um not doers of the word and most are just hearers and i get that not everybody can in a practical sense uh, go out soul winning um but for those who can you should and for me um the opportunity to to do that in a time when well what if they do shut everything down where you can't literally walk the streets like china because that's i think we could all relate to that with with what was going on with the scam of the we all know the world economic forum was behind it all now um and they have all the governments on the payroll now as we see and of course and again nobody paused the video i'm just doing this for effect that we all know that the satanists and the, and the hollywood and the music and they're all in it together and we we know all that now but at the time we genuinely thought this was a real thing right and and i'm not downplaying that because we do know there was obviously something out there but we know it was also created and so seeing that play out in the flesh we didn't fully know that firsthand and um i guess my mentality was was like you know it was just to have a heart for serving and to be out there and I, I can't help but think of the the scripture that says them that will obtain a better resurrection um and even on my sales and I, I when it comes to rewards it's something i always say when we go out is like i never want to concentrate on rewards when i'm going out let me doesn't even cross so, our mind, really, does it? Doesn't even cross our mind. You know, we deal with the people, we deal with the individual door to door. We never even think of like, hey, we've got these twenty houses, let's bosh these ones off quick. Um used the UK word there, didn't I? Uh, I mean like get rid of these twenty houses real quick. Um no, that's we take every door personally and individually and you know even though we can get to a door and as the scripture says the first and second admonition move on because it's england we have the time to go three four five six if needed yeah we've even had gone up to 20 i dare say on a couple of occasions but you know we're there for the people and those kind of things never come into our mind because like yes we want to get to as many doors as we can obviously but but I think if you start thinking about any external thoughts, you know, it can be a problem. So, you know, we try it's and focus. About person getting saved. And, it's, and even if people don't necessarily get saved straight away, or even sometimes they don't get saved, it's still satisfying to get the truth out there for the people that will listen, isn't it? And you never know, you can even plant the odd seeds out there. Like you always say, yeah, you know those guys that scream at repent of sins in the street? Yeah, take it to the bank, they're not saved. Next door. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. so you've got that bit yeah. in there. 
even just getting those bits in there is great because, like, you know, I think in England, I always, not always, but sometimes I joke, don't I say, to make people smile, I say, hey, at least we're not sure that's witnesses here today or, or whatever, you know. Um, the mor- morons, I mean the Mormons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the morons, I mean the Mormons, yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, and, and honestly, guys, for anybody who's never been soul winning, I encourage you to do it because it's like, number one, you're doing the the most, as the Bible says, the most important work for God, obviously getting people saved. And I get it can be done. I get not everybody's a talker. I get everybody has a different personality type. But you know what? Even though, like, um, God gave me the talent to speak to people, like, there's going to be people that I can't reach that you can, you know, everybody's different i guess probably percentage ratio maybe just because of the way of the gift and i've got but you know the other side like there's you know don't ever ask me to play an instrument or sing or do anything like that because you know that's me bottom of the queue um exposing my faults there but like um yeah, um, but, but like these crazy point. stories that you, 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 we get these crazy stories out soul winning, don't we? Like, so you know, do you know why you're going to heaven? Oh, yeah, I know why I've got ESP. <laughs> Just oh, that. we've heard it all. We've, we've that's the fun part because you know, you're never gonna. Everybody, just when you think you've heard it all, you hear um, something else. What about that lady that day? Um, in Sheffield that told us about our past lives. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this, I can see this lady's well put together. She's in a nice home with a nice car. And she's well put together. And she's like talking about past lives just as we're like ordering and, a Starbucks. And unlike, <laughs> unlike Bill McGregor, these are people that look completely normal and actually function at life as well. And yes. there's still just this weird lair comes out of, of all this stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, one of the one of the giftings is, and I hope people pick it up, and it should come across as like people want to talk to me. I've, I'm a very engaging person, as you can probably tell. Um, I do really love speaking to people because it's the the zeal of the Lord, and having the knowledge with it is like I want to. It's the ultimate goal as a soul when it to to get people saved, and so we we do get into lots of conversations with people and it can be really varied and you know um it can be like i say it can be great sometimes never mess with god remember the the um the physics pre- professor that we met um who was like trying to give me all these things and i went well i was never a big science guy at university but are you telling me and can we have this on camera that nothing can create something which therefore produces everything go and he's just like it was that moment of just like where he's like being all go and then just uh i've got to go um i mean a lot of the <laughs> atheists they'll they'll just sort of shut us off at that point right but like when we're yeah. dealing with christians sometimes they're the most difficult people to feel deal with because by you, you far and away actually, the most difficult they should yeah. know better and even when they admit that they don't know if they're going to heaven you think that would be pretty basic stuff in the christian world right they don't even want to give us five minutes to talk about it. it's always oh my baby needs feeding yeah funny that often the baby needs feeding just when we arrive we've got that effect on people but it's like when when we do get the chance to talk to people it's just like you can see the cognitive dissidence just <laughs> <off> the face. <laughs> I a lot of the time will say or I'll say like um, when they want to tell me all about the Bible and it's just like and I'm like well you know I'm 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 uh, really behind on my Bible reading I'm I've, I'm only up to sort of aiming for finishing it cover to cover ten times and like <laughs> I like kind of like watching the color drain out the face at that point when you go and like and you're like well you must have read it a lot no and like. And and you kind of like so. Have you read the Bible cover to cover at least one time? <laughs> you know, about it, don't we? <laughs> but they yeah. want to tell me all about it, right? Um, so yeah, so we can we can have those those laughs. Um, but like, um, I think and again touching on the on the COVID thing. I mean, we've been at doors where we've had like 
all deers, as we'd say in the UK, I'm using UK words again, um, where you'd have like an old lady and be like, she's not had any contact with anybody for a while. And like, even though she might not be a Christian, um, she's just very appreciative that like, there's some kind of outreach where we've gone to that door. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be post COVID era, but yeah, we've literally had that in York where we've knocked on people's door and like, they're just happy to chat with us, you know? Um, you know, and, and like, look, if, if that lady, I mean, uh, thinking about it now, she, you know, if, if, was there anything she needed from the shop or what, do you know what I mean? You know, yes, we have a job to do, but like, I never want to uh, leave out charity, you know, cause that's sometimes, you know, think we can forget that. Right. Um, obviously the ultimate charity is, is preaching the gospel to people. But what I'm getting at is like, that's the fun thing about soul winning is that like we never know what the situation is going to be every every time you go out it's always different you know people just i guess in the world roll that off and they'll say things like well when i go to work every day is different and this and that no god's work is truly different like you know um and as we know the whole heaven rejoices when one person's saved you know, um, and I guess that I guess the for the people who really want to have the ears open and really get reaffirmed with their salvation, shall we say, um, is people who there's people who maybe through pride don't want to admit that, or they don't want to speak in front of the neighbour, which I totally get, or whatever it is, because for a while I had some very close brothers and sisters who believed in the in the false um, doctrine of um, an oratory prayer was required in the salvation presentation. Now, let me just say this disclaimer. I always encourage people in prayer because it's, it's a holy moment and it's... Um, it helps to verbalize it's get, what you've got. It helps to verbalize, yeah. and, and and I say something like this, don't I? Look, you're not saying this to me or Josh. You're saying this to God, and it's just for, in a way for you to remember the date and time you got saved, or something yeah. very basic and simple like that. And I always do generally include the words, "Hey, prayer doesn't save you." It's Jesus said it was the circumcision without hands, and you communicate that from when you internalize that special moment of hearing receiving the gospel and believing it in your heart you know because we you can only imagine the works people going who can know it the heart is deceitful of all things you know you can just imagine it now can't you right but we know something happens and um you're born again and you've believed on the lord and um confession is made under salvation but that's not an oratory confession because the key verse that the people i just mentioned to who are brought them round on this was I can't remember the verse number off the top of my head but it says many of the Jews believed on his name but wouldn't publicly confess him yeah it's in so, John's gospel somewhere isn't it so somewhere in John's gospel so Chapter eight or 12 you, or something. so you you think of the, the amount of people especially in 2024 who don't even really want to talk to people and they're getting people at the door hearing God's word you know, I truly believe no matter where you are in the world that, like, um, people are always hung- – the people who want to hear God's word are going to listen to you and they're going to ask questions. You know, we'll tell you a quick example. When we are in Manchester, beautiful summer's day, one of the best days. I used to live at uh, right next to Longford Park, didn't I? So we had the zoo in there. It was just amazing, beautiful homes around there. Anyway, so we knocked on this door. And this guy come to the door and we were there for like, I want to say at least an hour and a half. <laughs> I don't know if it was um, that long, but it was quite a while, yeah. It, it was a while. It was a while, felt wasn't like it? An hour and a half, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, I could be wrong about that, but it just, it, it felt so long because the, firstly, obviously the guy got saved, but when he got saved, I've never met anybody that wanted to know about this, 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 and it was great. And I wish more people were like that, but not everybody is like that, right? 
you know, we give him cues and signpost people towards like, hey, uh, I recommend this preacher. However, I think he's wrong on this, but he's he's got the fundamentals right, or or whatever it is. Um, you know, um, I recommend uh, this guy's channel who stood behind me right now. Um, he's uh, sorry about his droll Sheffield voice, but he's a nice guy. Um, so you know, there's we have good banter when we're out. We have a real good laugh. We always have some nice food. You know, um, and for us, it's, it's like bloke time as well. Isn't it? It's like other people go yeah. fishing, go to the gym together. It's like, no, this is our bloke time. <laughs> yeah, do the gym through the week. Do yeah. the gym anytime. No, this is this is like, this is like it's time to get to work. I'm yeah. about my father's business now. But you know what the cool part is? God has a sense of humour, and and that comes out. I think when we're preaching to people, because it's like all people have ever heard particularly in England, is the religious lost at the door, you know, uh, the Jehovah's false witnesses and the morons. Sorry, I mean Mormons. So, like, you know, it's refreshing that when you, and people, we do see it occasionally, don't we? People's ears, people are not stupid. People's ears perk up when they hear the word Baptist. Now, we do always put a disclaimer in there to say, hey, um, I'm just a Bible-believing Christian. I'm a King James Bible believing Christian. Now, I do lean on uh, Baptist teachings, particularly those who are fundamental and I know of saved people. Um, you know, so, uh, and then we expound on things and, and, and go maybe through extra, a few extraneous deals if, if people want to know a bit more. But, but it's mainly but it's that just, guy it's just that, an effective way of saying we're not JW straight away, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, probably yeah. Probably the only people who have ever knocked your door in England, anyway. Yeah, so people put people at ease straight away to 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 because they're kind of like semi shocked and like, whoa, like, well, who are you then, kind of thing. And um, yeah, um, we don't need an iPad to tell us the eight step plan of salvation. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, and I, that's always fun catching them, catching those devils out while we're out and about and stuff. Because let me rest assured, people, that like obviously I don't let them off the hook, you know. Um, rebuke, reprove, is is there public rebuke? Is there because um, hey, don't get me wrong, the very rare time they want to listen, we will give them the gospel. We will give them the gospel, but a primary starts with the rebuke and the reprove first. Um, because obviously, like the Bible says, some, some, um, you know, some people need a, essentially an arm around the shoulder and some with compassion, and some people need that fire breathing preaching, you know, pulling them out of the fire. Everybody's different. Yeah. Well, I think that's been great, James. Thank you very much. I think it's good to wrap it up there. And uh, we can yeah. get to bed. Because I've got work we can. tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank yeah. you for your time. And I uh, hope everybody in, in the audience enjoys that. And uh, see some comments if you li liked any of those Bill stories. And I'll try and edit some clips in from Bill, like when he knocked the pulpit over. That was quite funny. I'll yeah, we're that thinking about there. having a... Having a... Um, a a, a weekly talk or something called James Talks. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've, if you've got any suggestions, um, I think I'm up for doing food reviews <laughs> <laughs> um, and whatever. But um, yeah, um, yeah, I I don't mind sharing because I, I want to be a light in the world, and I hope people can get some kind of like. Um, help and some kind of enjoyment from listening to me um, and I'm always available to take questions and um, we're going to upload the plan of salvation for anybody who may have just joined um, who's not heard the gospel before um, and uh, yeah um, everybody have a great evening and um, take it easy and we'll uh, catch up soon